Good evening. I call to order the Baltimore County Board of Education's public hearing on the proposed fiscal year 2021 capital budget. The sign-up sheet was available to the public prior to the meeting for anyone wishing to speak at this evening's hearing. As your name is called, please come to the front table to speak. I will also announce the next speaker's name and ask that person come to the table and be on deck and ready to provide their comments. Written comments may be given to Ms. Gover, the board's assistant, or submit it via email at boe, at, <clears throat> excuse me, via email to boe at bcps.org. Each speaker will be given three minutes to speak on the proposed fiscal year 2021 capital budget. This public hearing is not the forum to speak on any other topics. I ask you to observe the time to my left and also on the speaker's table, which will let you know when your time is up. Please conclude your remarks when you hear the buzzer or see that your time has expired. And the first two speakers this evening, it, the first is Colleen Baldwin and the next is Ms. Yara Sheikh. Good evening. Good evening, Chairwoman Causey, members of the board, and BCPF, BCPS leaders in attendance tonight. My name is Colleen Baldwin. I'm the PTA Vice President at Pleasant Plains Elementary, the parent of a second grader and future Panther, and a proud BCPS spouse. I appreciate the opportunity to speak and will surely echo themes you've already heard from me, our staff, and fellow parents as recently as last night. Given tonight's focus on capital budget planning, I'd like to address what has not been in any capital budget to date a permanent solution for the critical mass of students at our school. According to the 2018 Student Counts Report, Pleasant Plains is by percentage the most overcrowded school in the central area and the fourth most overcrowded school in the county. Current enrollment sits at 702 students. Our children and staff do their best to function in an aging building that is slated for 509 students, a building whose core spaces were noted in a 2008 not 2018 report, as undersized for its state-rated capacity. Today and for most of this school year, we are at 138% of that capacity, and the vast majority of our neighboring schools are also at or above their capacity. While we've received and appreciate assistance in the form of additional relocatables, we have eight in total, they do nothing to address the volume challenges in our hallways, our bathrooms, our gym, and our cafeteria, which serves lunch from 10.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Our property is not laid out in a way that is conducive to more temporary relief without raising significant safety concerns. I can't play Monday morning quarterback to figure out how or why we've been overlooked despite the numbers. The fact remains that while careful consideration is needed for capital projects, the sense of urgency for our community is at a fever pitch. Actual enrollment data shows that our numbers continue to grow and the enrollment projection figures grossly misrepresent our real experience of a school population that shows no signs of significant attrition. Several parents have asked what exactly do we want? A new building, a renovation? We don't know that answer because Pleasant Plains still hasn't been elevated to the point where there is even a plan to consider. I feel for folks in places like Perry Hall Middle where my husband teaches, at Delaney, Towson, and Lansdowne where the current fiscal landscape has put plans on hold. Yet I envy the fact that they have some semblance of a plan to delay. We've more than demonstrated that we want to partner with the experts in our system to find a solution. I worry that fiscal year 2021 is a little too late, but we'll pursue any avenue we can for our kids and staff. We know we're on your radar, but have moved beyond the need for awareness and implore you to initiate an immediate call to action that results in a meaningful and permanent solution that will not only benefit our school community, but those around us. Thank you. Thank you. And our next speaker is Josh. Good evening, Ms. Shake. Good evening. Um, my name is Yara Shake. I'm the PTA president at Ridgely Middle School. I am here as an advocate and one of the founders of Friends of Delaney High School in 2014. This is my fifth year coming before the board requesting a solution to the conditions at Delaney High School. Um, as Mr. Smith um, was present in 2000. 
14, 15, and 16, um, he knows that there was a feasibility study that was completed on Delaney High School um, to repair Delaney High School. Um, a renovation was proposed in 2016. That renovation was half the per square foot cost, which is how we fund renovations through the IAC in the state of Maryland. It was um, half of the cost that was spent on other renovations um, at Hereford High School and at Pikesville High School. Um, in addition to that, um, that renovation was did not meet all of the areas cited in the feasibility study. Um, so it came off the um, capital budget and a replacement school for Delaney High School was put on in the last county capital budget and the county capital budget um, before that. So FY 2018, to, uh, FY 2019 and FY 2020. So what we're asking for now is that a replacement school remain on the county capital request in FY 2021. And we understand that you are not the funding authority. Uh, the funding authority is the state and is the county government. And we will work um, to pass legislation in the state that may make it feasible for us to be built. We know that Lansdowne High School has a worse mechanical, electrical, and plumbing score than we do. We understand that there are schools that need to go first, but we need to remain on the county capital request. We would appreciate planning and design money, and that can come from you asking for it. So please consider keeping us on it. We would love to, to the new board members, we would love to have you tour Delaney High School and see what it's like. We'd particularly like you there in June and this week um, to see. I know some of um, our board members have reached out and, and hopefully that will get on the calendar. So thank you and again, um, the 2016 feasibility study is available. Our electrical panel is from 1964. Um, we have an addition that was built in 1999. Uh, the life expectancy, a lot of that machinery is 20 years. We've hit it. So we need a comprehensive solution and a replacement school. Thank you very much. Thank you. And our next speaker is Phoebe Evans Latoka. Good evening. Thank you. My name is Phoebe Evans Latosha, and I am here as an advocate for Towson High School. I know there is no money in the fiscal year 21 capital budget request to address Towson High's extreme overcrowding, but I'm here to remind the board of the need to start planning relief now. Two agenda items from your May 7th meeting were of particular interest to me. First was the Northeast Area Middle School Boundary Study discussion, and the second is the contracts for lease and purchase of additional relocatables or trailers. The Northeast Middle Boundary Study is in response to the extreme overcrowding at Perry Hall Middle and the delay in building a new middle school at the Nottingham site. Like Perry Hall Middle, Towson High is similarly overcrowded, and any plan to build new seats in any proximity to Towson High is likely to take another 10 years for those seats to become available. Towson High currently has 369 students above its state rated capacity of 1260, projected to be 443 next year, 538 over capacity in 2020, and over 700 by 2026. Letting a school designated for, two, for 1260 students get up to 2000 student enrollment is negligent and puts our student safety at risk. We have had trailers on site at Towson for 15 years longer than the current seniors have been in VCPS. And now we are told we can expect another 10 years of trailers. 25 years of trailers is not a temporary solution. That is multiple generations of students and trailers at Towson High. My current high school children have never attended a school from Stonely Elementary through Dumbarton Middle to Towson High without trailers. And the previous capital projects have not eliminated overcrowding at these schools. 
The contracts for additional relocatables will likely bring the return of trailers to Stoneley and additional trailers to Towson High, which currently has 10 on site and will need more next year. Not only do these trailers usurp our school's athletic field space and overcrowding also negatively impacts cafeteria space, bathrooms, and other communal spaces. Rather than spending millions of dollars year after year on relocatables, which our students and families do not want and do not feel safe inside in the era of school shootings, please consider conducting a system-wide boundary studies to provide relief for our overcrowded schools like Towson High School before the 2020-2021 school year. We have no solution for our extreme overcrowding at Towson, and it will take years to build any new high school seats. I respectfully request that this board take a system-wide look at seat capacity within high schools with the goal of reducing the extreme overcrowding at Towson High. We have undercapacity schools within BCPS while Towson continues to be over capacity year after year. The high school capacity study failed to take a holistic view of seats within our system. There's currently excess capacity and um, Thank you. That concludes our speakers for the evening. The proposed fiscal year 2021 capital budget is scheduled to be presented to the board at its August 6, 2019 meeting. The board's work session on the capital budget will take place on August 20th, 2019. The board is scheduled to vote on the fiscal year 2021 capital budget request at the September 10th, 2019 meeting. Again, all written comments received will be compiled for all board members. We're going to recess for just 10 minutes and then we're going to reconvene the meeting and then we will be going into a closed session. So we're recessed for 10 minutes. You may get up and move around.